Welcome to our online Yin and Restore class. I have Amy here. She's going to get to rest and relax with you guys. We have a few props. If you don't have these kind of things at home, you can grab some books or something instead of blocks. Um, blankets or towels work and then you can use a cushion from your couch or pillows or something even two big beach towels are good to roll up to make a bolster and then a belt would work instead of a yoga strap so we're gonna get started in a really relaxing pose Amy's gonna build a little Cadillac here we're gonna take the bolster and two blocks to prop her up the blocks don't have to be super far apart and Remember to take the time to really set things up just so that you can relax because Yin and Restorative Yoga is all about getting you out of that fight or flight mindset. And then with these blankets, she can see where she wants her legs to go, but we can add some extra cushion under the knees to help her really release. Nice and her eyes are closed. And we'll take a few minutes at a time in every pose. So with restorative yoga, we utilize our props to let our body take the shape that we're trying to find some release in our body with. And then with yin, we'll find some deeper stretches, but still longer holds. And now that she's settled in, let's all take a deep inhale in and sigh out the exhale. Just feeling a softening sensation throughout the entire body. And then give the body a good scan to see where things can relax a little more. Maybe rolling the shoulders under the body just a little bit extra to let them release towards the floor. And as things start to open up with time, feel free to adjust the arms and the legs if you're craving a different stretch. hardest part to this style of yoga can be just shutting the brain off a little bit and our brain is made to think so as those thoughts start to come in just recognize if they need to be in your head right now or if there's no point to them in this moment every exhale can be helpful to kind of push those thoughts away We're gonna take about 10 more breaths in this position. Maybe those breaths feel a little deeper and longer, which is wonderful. And hopefully you're feeling a little more relaxed. So if you notice that you need to set an intention for your class, for your practice today, maybe this is the moment.
Before we move to our next position, just start to tap maybe the thumb to the tip of each fingertip. Some deeper breaths might feel really good, adding wiggles to the toes. And then as the body starts to kind of awaken here, you can add larger movements and stretches. Always listen to your body. It always tells you where it wants to go in the moment. And since we're still early on in our practice here, She's just gonna take some time to roll onto the right side of her body and you're gonna do the same thing. And with the blocks underneath the bolster, we can keep them there because she's eventually gonna lay on her side on the bolster and she can stick her arm underneath the bolster. There's a little cubby there. Depending on the floor that you're using to practice on, you might want one of the blankets under your hips, not necessary. And then I would put a blanket in between the knees and the thighs here. Nice. And the legs can be as close to your torso as you want, or they can straighten out. Again, just finding what works for your body on this side. The next side might be very different. Just feeling this release into the support underneath the body. And this can be one of our first opportunities to find a deeper stretch. So if you want to take this into a little bit of a spinal twist, again, being very careful with the low back, you can start to put the torso um, a little more on the bolster. Some people like to turn their head towards the back shoulder. Just be very careful with your neck so you can turn onto your belly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And again, a degree of where the knees come closer or further away from the body is just based on how your low back feels. So we're never trying to force anything to happen. Letting the breath and gravity guide you.
you did find yourself in a pretty deep twist, you're going to start to untwist slightly. If the twist you found isn't very deep and you're still comfortable, you can continue to breathe here for a little bit longer before we start to move to the other side. And then at your own pace, you might want to sit up for a little bit. You might just want to roll to the opposite side. There's no rules. And then with this side, you might notice things feel very different. So one size does not fit all with both sides of our body. Also remember, if you need a little lift under your head, you can always grab more blankets. And then remember, once you feel kind of comfortable here, if you want to explore that little twist on this side, you can. If you do choose to take the gaze towards that back shoulder on this side, don't force your neck. There's a lot going on in our neck. And these twists are great for our spinal health and just kind of maybe mentally wringing out the things that we no longer need. But no forcefulness. Make sure that there's a little awareness to how your breath is. If it's short and shallow, your body might be asking you to adjust out of this a little bit.
you chose to find that deep twist on this side, you're going to start to come out of it a bit. And if you didn't change your body at all, just keep resting here. When you're ready, we'll start to come up into a seat, an easy seat, whatever works for your legs. There's no rush. Just taking a few moments here, maybe to breathe, relax the shoulders, rock the head around. Kind of noticing the sensations in the low back, the hips. We're gonna keep opening up our legs a little bit. So we're gonna get um, some deeper stretches. I'll give you ideas to play around with restorative um, positions for this as well. But we're gonna come into a runner's lunge, a lizard pose. Um, we'll start with that right leg forward. I'll have um, maybe start to get into position. And if you have any knee issues, you might wanna blanket underneath that back knee. As long as the props aren't in your way, you can just keep it here because we'll utilize that a little bit later. And you can stay in this position if it's a pretty deep stretch, just to enjoy if it's enjoyable or find happy thoughts if it feels like it's fire. Um, you can adjust that foot a little bit, maybe out 45 degrees, that front foot, even rolling onto the outside of that foot to get a little more into the inner thigh. If your wrists feel a little sensitive, you can always roll up the front of your mat, use one of your other blankets to prop the heel of the hand up. And then if you wanna relax a little more into this, if you're able to, um, you can come down onto your forearms if you need blocks or bolster or anything. Yeah, don't it? Yeah. <laughs> it makes it a little more relaxing, right? And because again, we're staying here for a few minutes, our body's gonna naturally start to open up. Your body will as well, even if it doesn't feel like it's doing very much. Feeling that relaxation through the body, even if that's a little tough to find, just coming back to the breath. And in this moment, you can bring your awareness to that left thigh, that left hip flexor. If you're not feeling much of a sensation anymore, don't be afraid to tuck the back toes and scoot the knee back a little further.
When you're ready, if you're on your forearms, just start to come up onto those hands. And then you can make your way into a tabletop position. So dropping that right knee down, maybe adding some movement to get into that hip socket a little bit. Enjoying our rebound sensation here. And then we get to do the other side now. <laughs> and as I keep mentioning, one side can be very different. I know I have one side that's pretty open. So when it comes to these deep stretches, if a side already feels way more open, just ask yourself if you need to keep stretching it, right? We want to try to create more balance in the body. And don't get frustrated if things feel tight. That just means you're strong. <laughs> We'll find those same little adjustments. Maybe the foot needs to point out a little more. Maybe you roll to the outside of that left foot now. I know for me, I'll clench my teeth in this position. Uh, so if you're anything like me, just relax into it. Maybe tell yourself how much you love this pose. Mind over matter. <laughs> Just check in if you're not feeling much of a stretch in the body. Can you take this a little deeper? Maybe scooting that back knee back a little bit or lunging a little further. No pressure. <laughs> it's so important for us to stretch the front of our hips. Especially if you sit for long periods of time, the muscles start to get a little shorter, it can throw your pelvis position off. And some people believe we hold a lot of emotions in our thighs and our hips. So if that resonates with you, let it go.
If you're on those forearms, you can start to come up onto those hands, slow, mindful movements, taking a few more breaths here. And then slowly coming into that tabletop position, adding those little wiggles and movements to the left hip and leg. And we'll come into a child's pose here. So big toes touch, knees go out wide. Again, you can use your blanket on your knees if you need that softness. Now, traditional child's pose can feel like a pretty deep stretch through the quads, even the shoulders, the arms, um, the spine's nice and long. If you want the restorative variation, I would use the blanket under the knees, another blanket maybe under the thighs and the calves, and you can use the bolster to relax on. Pull the bolster between your thighs though so that you have full support of your torso and don't be afraid to relax your head in one direction because I'll give you a friendly little cue to switch sides. If the shoulders are a little sensitive, arms can always relax by your sides as well. And child's pose is so good to kind of come into your own body and mind even more. I like to focus on the sensation of my belly and my chest kind of moving with my breath into the support underneath me. And you can feel that expansion through the side body and the back body with the breath as well. Every exhale, kind of imagining those hips are reaching towards the heels even more. So you really get into this nice release. If you have had your head turned in one direction, go ahead and gently switch, making any other adjustments to your pose that you need.
find about 10 more breaths in this position. Again, maybe finding a little more depth and length to the breath. Now that things are really calm inside our body, maybe we can find our full capacity for our breath. done with those 10 breaths you can start to make your way back up into a tabletop for a moment we'll eventually find our way back into a seat feel free to shake out the legs a little bit I'm gonna rebuild Amy's Cadillac here <laughs> if you can have an assistant as well go for it <laughs> So I'm going to make this um, set up a little higher than what we started with because we're going to place um, our leg on it. So I'm going to have Amy turn around and she's going to place her right leg on it, lay down first, <laughs> and place her right leg on this. And I'm just going to help set her up. Eventually she'll need that blanket probably. And then um, once you come into this position, just see if you need extra cushion under your hips or your head, you can always use your blanket. All right. And then I'm gonna give her the strap here. So you grab your belt or your strap. She's gonna place the ball of that left foot in the strap to get a little hamstring stretch here. Now, if this is a lot for your your body here, don't be afraid to bend that right knee and just place the foot on the bolster or something. We put the strap in the ball of the foot to have a little more control so she can kind of point, point her foot out or flex her foot to see what stretch here feels the best. And then I am an advocate for kind of exploring a little bit here. So if you wanna add a little movement to the leg, maybe little circles, you might find that sweet spot that feels really yummy. Now, of course, if this stretch is just too deep for what you need in the moment, just bend that left knee and kind of hug it into the body so you still get a great sensation through your low back and even in that hamstring. It's perfectly fine to stay here, stretching the hamstring. If you wanna get a little more into your inner thigh, just place that right hand on your right thigh to keep that hip from rolling over and then slowly start to take that left leg out to the side. Now, if you need to add a bend to the knee, you can. You can even just hold on to the knee instead of the strap. Just finding that stretching sensation. It doesn't have to be super intense here. We'll take like 10 breaths in this position, so make sure that you can breathe. start to bring that leg back up after those 10 breaths and you can release the foot from the strap we're going to take a little time in a tree position with the leg so um, just resting that foot on the mat and letting the knee fall out to the left side 
some people do put their foot on the bolster, that left foot on the bolster, but don't feel like you need. And then if you need extra cushion under the knee or extra lift, yep. <laughs> and those arms can extend out wide or even reach overhead, just being aware of how this feels in that low back. Maybe hugging those knees into the chest. Wrapping the arms around the legs, adding a little movement to this if you want to explore that. And then once you feel ready, you might need to scoot your body over. Amy doesn't because I moved her <laughs> stuff for her. So placing that left foot, left leg on the bolster. Maybe that. <laughs> Just kind of settling in. And then once you feel ready, you can find that strap or that belt around the ball of your right foot. <sighs> Noticing the differences, right? And 
like I mentioned before, if you feel a lot of strain in this, bend that left knee, right? Be nice to your body, it bends a lot. <laughs> Maybe exploring a little movement, maybe drawing circles on the ceiling with the foot, or you know, maybe some side to side movement. Again, just the body will tell you where it needs to go here. If you're craving that inner thigh stretch, keeping that left hand on the left thigh, start to open that right leg out. A little bit can go a long way. Start to bring that right leg back. You can release the strap, we don't need that here. And just set the foot down on the mat, take a moment. And then we'll come into that tree position again. The foot can just rest on the mat, knee off to the side, or if it wants to rest on the bolster, you can do that too. the body another good scan see where things need to release more adjust the arms if needed just really feel again that support underneath you so you can really let the legs get heavy the low back get heavy the back the shoulders the arms the neck and the head
slowly start to adjust that right leg. Bring the foot down to the mat, knee up towards the ceiling, taking some time here, some breaths, and then eventually maybe coming into that little hug, bringing the knees towards the chest and wrapping the arms around the legs. So if you don't have a lovely assistant, you're gonna roll over to one side and slowly bring yourself up into a seat. Amy has me, she can stay on her side if she wants. <laughs> Just to remove your little Cadillac. And then we're gonna come into a flapping fish here. So you'll use your pillow or your bolster laying on um, your left side, bringing the right leg on top of the support, making sure the knee and the ankle are supported here. Perfect. And you can hug it up as close as you want to your torso or as far away. This bottom leg doesn't really matter what it does. Make sure that your hip feels okay on the mat. If you need a pillow for your head, <laughs> grab one. And then there's a few things we can explore here. So if you want a side body stretch, you can take that top arm up and over to feel that sensation. If you want more of a twist in your practice today, um, you can eventually start to roll onto your back so that you get a deep twist through the low back. And then you can play around with straightening that right leg or not, but you know, what's gonna serve you the best with each breath. If you're going for a more yin style, a deeper stretch, maybe you don't use the bolster underneath you. So again, yogi's choice with any of these poses. If you're in that spinal twist, just start to roll all the way back over onto that left side. So we'll come back into that flapping fish and take about another minute here. So letting the spine kind of stabilize a little bit, hopefully feeling more refreshed in that low back.
start to move our way into the other side, you can take as much time in between that you need. So little movements. I always like to start with deeper breaths first, just to kind of feel that energy move in my body. When you do come off to your left side, again, just make sure that that hip is going to be okay on the mat before you try to force yourself to get settled. And bring that awareness to the left side of your body here. What does this side need you to do? Do you need to take that top arm up and over to find that side body stretch? Can you let the leg get heavier on the support or on the bolster? And just because you went into the twist on one side doesn't mean you necessarily have to do it on this side, but if that sounds good and your low back seems like it needs that twist today and the shoulders need that little bit of opening, you can go ahead and make your way into that position. pretty deep spinal twist, slowly start to bring yourself back onto that right side, into that flapping fish, the position we started in.
We'll start to move on to our back. If you are using something on your, um, or underneath your head, we're gonna come up to a laying position on our back. So I just don't want your head pushed too far up so you can unfold a blanket if you're using it or maybe find a smaller pillow. And then whatever you've been using as a bolster, if anything, we're gonna take it down on your mat so it sits right underneath the knees. Maybe you need a little extra cushion under the hips or under the head. And just make sure that this is a comfortable position for you to enjoy a nice final relaxation, a nice Shavasana. Feeling all this energy that you've now created more space to move through your body and through your mind. And take a big inhale in, feeling all that good energy. Part the lips and just sigh out the things we don't want, need any longer here. And you can take as much time as you need in your Shavasana, reminding yourself that you need to rest once in a while, making that balance. And I thank you for joining Amy and myself today. Namaste.